I trust you did well on your quiz in our last lesson. We just went over it in here. For the most part, a good job. Some little things here and there that we needed to address. Uh, let's take one last look at some of these rational, literal equations. On the handout, you had two problems to do for homework. That was numbers 15 and 19. Number 15, I thought was, uh, as long as you were careful on the foil, pretty easy because what is number 15 class? Proportion. Proportion. So to solve, all we have to do is cross multiply. Now, I say foil, but in reality, we can't FOIL in its strictest sense because when I take the product of the means here, they're not similar binomials, right? So I'm not going to get a first outer inner last. I'm going to get a first outer inner last as separate terms. But go ahead and run through that FOIL for me, Abby. Um, Rx positive negative There we go. And then the same thing's going to happen here with the product of the extremes, Brandon. And then from here, there's a couple things we can do to really simplify our life. Maddie? Mm -hmm. can Good. So we cancel some stuff. At this point, I've just got, if I'll recopy, sx equals minus s squared equals negative sx positive r squared. And uh, there is, at least it appears to be, a little x here. Which one, Audrey? Mm -hmm. One on the right. The one on the right, the negative sx, because negative is always smaller than positive. Well, I say that. I suppose if the s were a negative value, this would be greater. But in appearance, at least, it appears to be smaller. Move it over as a and positive 2x. And then at the same time, let's go ahead and move over the, the negative x as a positive. to get um, s squared. Yeah, they're, they are not like terms. They don't combine. It's also a sum of squares, which, remember, isn't going to factor, but it doesn't matter. Because I don't really factor anything here, class. To get the x by itself, I just divide away 2s. And there's my answer. No factoring needed this time. s squared plus r squared, or r squared plus s squared, if you like alphabetical order, all over 2s. How many have that answer? On oh, number 15. Nobody. All right, three of you didn't do it, and the two of you did, didn't get that. Does it make sense now, though, what we could have, should have done? Any questions? Questions on the foil, perhaps? Any questions at all? Let's take a look at number 19, then. And uh, 3ax negative 2b, or not, all over 3b minus ax negative a over 2b, or not, equals ax over b minus 2 over 3. What do we have to do first, Genesis? Before we do that, if we had denominators that were polynomials, I would agree with you. Let's factor or group all the polynomials first, but we have no polynomials, so we can go straight to figuring out what is our LCD, because we want to multiply that by, oh, that's not how you put it on. Anyway, how... <laughs> all right, so everything, right, by the LCD, which is 6B. 6B. If we multiply the 6b, it's going to cancel to give me class a 2. two. Here it's going to cancel to give me a 3. three. And it is going to be a negative 3, by the way. Here it's going to cancel to give me 6. That's pretty easy. Here it's going to cancel to give me or not. And uh, so then we just go through and we multiply. Let's go, uh, let's go back to Audrey. Good. All right, then what, Maddie? Good. Good. Well, not quite. We're done canceling stuff, sure. Um, so, but I mean, at this point, I've got to, if I were to recopy it, I'm usually too lazy to do it, but we'll do it anyway. I've got negative 3x plus 3a equals... Zero. Zero. There's nothing over there. All right, so, Brandon? Yeah, I could move either one, but I'd rather move the 3ax to make it a positive 3ax. And it's as easy as dividing away the 3a to leave ourselves with 
x equals good, not 0, but 1. Some would argue we need to say that a cannot equal 0 because we need to divide away an a. But what a is it exactly that can't equal 0? So we have to say uh, that statement there on number 19. How many got x equals 1 for number 19? All right, nobody. All right, questions on number 19. How many feel like you would have gotten if you'd done it? Yeah, I love the confidence out of people who didn't do it, right? It's like, I wouldn't have thrown that interception if I were the quarterback. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> Andre's laughing. I'm like, ha, you Colts fan. All right. <laughs> hey, we won last night, all right? So just, all right, questions on these. Let me go and collect those handouts from you if they're still in good condition with only moderate creasing, corona infection, things like that. If they're completely covered in graphite, um, and other pencil marks, then you can, you can just keep it as a memento of this great occasion, something to remember it by. Um, of course, you can always print another one if you wanted to off YouTube. All right, um, let's turn to page 77 in your textbooks, where you did the review, numbers 13 through 16 at the top of the page. And it was 13 through 16, not just 13 and 16, so... Uh, did, uh, did the right work there in Genesis. Uh, number 13, it says to solve the literal equation for x. And this, I think, was considerably easier than the literal equations that were on the handout. Pretty easy, I think, to solve for x. Uh, we're going to go to Maddie, though. Uh, how many got that answer on number 13? X equals that. All right, questions on 13. How about number 14? We've got a C squared X negative DX is equal to C positive D. Maybe double take. I was like, wait, is that a DX or a D squared X? It is just a DX, okay, which is kind of obnoxious. Genesis? You're going to factor out the X. Good. The X's were already separated from the non-X's. That wasn't the case here. We had to move the C first. Here they're already separated. C squared minus D. I'll equal to C plus D, and then divide away with C squared minus D. And everything, I just started to do it there. Everything in me wants to factor this into C plus D, C minus D, and then cancel the C plus Ds. But you can't do anything like that. You're done. How many got C plus D over C squared minus D? Did you copy as a D squared, and you factored and canceled stuff? No, no that, that wasn't what you did. What, what did you do? I factored it. You factored even though it wasn't a d squared. Okay. But you, you were like me, we're like, this, this is not a factor, we've got to be able to cancel stuff. It'd be so much cooler if we had that. Yeah, see, I come up with cool problems for you, and then the book gives you pathetically easy stuff like this. That's just no fun at all. all right. um, anyway, number 15, any questions on 13 or 14? After that handout I gave you, there better not be questions on 13 or 14. All right, number 15. <clears throat> Let's not make this hard either. The sum of x and 4 equals 12. We need to first translate that into an equation, Abby. Um, x plus 4 equals 12. And then we need to solve for x. x equals 8. Good. Do you feel like you're back in 8th grade? All right. <laughs> we literally do ones like this in 8th grade. Uh, number 16. The difference between 15 and y is 3. Brandon? 15 minus y equals 3. Very good. And what is y? 20, 15. <laughs> 12. 12 is correct. <clears throat> Questions on those? Turn over to page 96. Two more. These ones, a little bit more fun. Not quite eighth grade level, at least. And uh, read number, uh, number, uh, number 21 for me, if you would. Uh, Genesis. Oh, the absolute value of z plus 4 equals 5. I was going to ask you if you need the glasses, and I realize you're already wearing them. <laughs> All right, z, absolute value of z plus 4 equals 5. <laughs> so <clears throat> how do we write this, Genesis? Z plus 4 equals 5. Well, close. Absolute Absolutely. value of z plus 4. I mean, literally, you write exactly what it says. It didn't even take any real thought. Now, from this, though, we're going to make two equations. That's why this is an eighth grade level, because they couldn't do that. Z plus 4 equals 5. Well, I guess they could have my time, so I just dealt. Z plus 4 equals 5. And you should have gotten two, not one answer for z. Two answers. Z equals 1. Z equals negative 1. 9. 
There we go. Z equals 1 and negative 9. How many have that on number 21? Number 22. The product of 3 and the absolute value of D minus 7 is 15. How do we write that? Maybe. And maybe we'll at least how to translate the word product and is. All right. And uh, so from here, what do we need to do? To get... Minus seven yeah. equals negative five. Yeah. All right, and then twelve and two are answers. Do we have that for number twenty-two? Questions on that? Any questions on the homework? Next section in your notes. We have been working through this chapter on equations. We've looked at nice, ordinary, easy equations. We've also looked at how to solve word problems using equations. We've looked at rational equations involving fractions and decimals. We've looked at literal equations, including formulas. Next section of notes, quadratic equations. Quadratic equations. Quadratic equations. And uh, you got an introduction to this in Algebra 1. Now, those who had me for Algebra 1, we did not get nearly as far with this as I wanted to. And somehow I'm going to find a way to blame coronavirus for that last year. Um, so Audrey and Genesis, I think, no, even with coronavirus when you were there, I don't know that we got as far as I wanted to. But certainly Maddie's class did not get as far as I would have liked. Quadratic equations, those are some things you should remember. A quadratic equation would be something like this, x squared plus 1 equals 2x plus 16, for instance. And what's interesting is, because of the x squared here, you have two solutions to the quadratic. If x is 5, then this is a true statement. 25 plus 1 equals 10 plus 16. But it's also going to be true if x equals negative 3. Because 9 plus 1 is 10, and negative 6 plus 16 is 10. So we get two solutions. That's the first thing I want you to write down for quadratic equations, is that you will have two solutions. Now, we're not foreign to this because of the absolute value equations and inequalities we've been working already. We're used to two solutions from those. That's going to be true of quadratics as well. And the reason is, as I alluded to, because of the x squared. That's another thing to note about quadratic equations, is that x squared is the highest power in a quadratic. It's what makes a quadratic. Quadratic, in fact, is the squared. Now, there are two, uh, a couple types of quadratic equations. And um, the first type of quadratic equation is what's called a complete quadratic equation. A complete quadratic equation. This would be an example of a complete quadratic. This quadratic equation has x squared and it has x to the first in it. Because it has both powers of x, it's complete. It has x squared and x to the first. The other type of quadratic is called an incomplete quadratic, also referred to as a pure quadratic. And an incomplete or a pure quadratic, it is quadratic, meaning it has x squared, but it's missing something. It's missing x to the first. x squared, of course, but not an x to the first power. An incomplete quadratic or a pure quadratic has the x squared. I mean, it wouldn't be quadratic without that, but it does not have the first power of x. Now, while this would be considered a complete or a, uh, or a complete quadratic, it's not in the proper form. And I want you to note the correct form for quadratic equations is the x squared first term, or x squared term first, then the x to the first term, then a constant term, all equal to zero. This is the proper form. A descending order on the x. Squared, first, gone, basically. Where again, a could be any number, b could be any number, c could be any number. c could be a zero, which would mean you wouldn't have a constant term. That's okay, it's still a complete quadratic. What if b were a zero? Thoughts? What if b, that number, b just represents any number, what if b is zero? You don't have x. Then we wouldn't have an x to the first, which means we'd have an incomplete or a pure quadratic. Bless you. So maybe jot this down. If b equals zero, then you have a pure quadratic. 
If B is zero, then you have a pure quadratic or an incomplete quadratic. It's missing something. First time I taught this to my algebra class, you know, nerd that I am, I went home to my wife and said, you're like the X to the first in my life. Without you, I would be incomplete. And she's like, huh? And of course, I had to reteach the whole lesson to her. And she's like, you just wasted 30 minutes of my life. Anyway, and uh, <laughs> just kidding, she accepts my nerddom for what it is. I don't know that that's a good pickup line, though, Brandon, going around, you know, Maddie, you can, besides the fact that she's saying, Maddie, you're the ex, that's why I picked her. Right? She's safe, right? <laughs> Actually, it's unsafe. <laughs> Brandon's about to get killed. All right, sorry, Brandon. <laughs> it's on YouTube, too. Brandon's like texting somebody, hey, did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, anyway, questions on this? Questions on this? Uh, pick up lines, get you in trouble. All right, um, so we're going to start, though, with the easiest of the quadratics, the incomplete quadratics, the pure quadratics that don't have the x to the first that, frankly, makes things more challenging in life. I'm not saying there's an illustration there at all. <laughs> but anyway, so next thing in your notes, solving pure quadratics or solving incomplete quadratics, but pure is faster to write. Solving incomplete quadratics, or solving pure quadratics. And the reason I think these are so easy is, really, frankly, this is intuitive. This is probably what you would do if you weren't sure what to do. Like, if I never taught you, you'd probably figure this out. Because if I want to solve for x, I've got to get x by itself. So to get x by itself, well, first I'd have to get rid of the 3, right, by dividing it away. And of course, that would give me x squared equals 6. But you notice the x isn't by itself. There's this squared with it. Well, how can I cause a squared to disappear? Do the opposite, right? Just like I divided away a 3 to get rid of a times 3, to get rid of a square, I can do the opposite, which is what? Square root of both sides. And of course, the square root of x squared, x, and the square root of 6. Well, that's not rational, so we'll just leave the square root of 6. But, but wait a second. I told you there's always two solutions to a quadratic. Here I see but one. Anyone remember from Algebra 1? There are two square roots of every number. A positive square root of 6 and a negative square root of 6. If you'll open the door for it in there, Abby, unless you don't want to. Just kidding, you have to. Yeah, we have to let him in, I know. Oh, he was calling it. Uh-huh, sure, sure. No, Michael, Michael's the kind of guy who wants to be in this class. Yeah, I don't believe that. Um, <laughs> anyway, have a seat. Open up your notes. So let's go and get these in your notes then. And you guys leave a little space for some notes that you missed. But solving pure quadratics, step number one is to isolate the x squared. Step number one is to isolate the x squared. I like to remember this with incomplete quadratics. Starts with an I. Isolate starts with an I. Incomplete quadratics or pure quadratics, you isolate x squared, which is what we did. And then take the square roots, underline the s, on both sides. You may even want to put in parentheses positive, negative. Because when you take a square root, you have to count with the fact that there are two of them. If you just saw a square root symbol, we'd assume the positive or negative that were indicated. We'd assume a principal root, but I do need two roots, both positive and negative. I've had students ask before, well, why don't we do the positive negative on the x as well? That's a fair question. Here's the reasoning. One thought is this, that positive x equals positive square root of 6, and that positive x equals negative square root of 6. But it would also be true that negative x equals positive square root of 6, and that negative x equals the negative square root of 6. Well, wait a second. If both sides are negative, class... Well, we already have that. And here, I can divide away the negative 1, but I already have that. So technically, you are with the positive and negative, but because it works out that way, we don't need to bother. We're too lazy. But just in case you were curious, why don't we do the positive and negative on the square root of the x squared? Because it turns right back into the same answers we already had. We still just get two roots. Questions on how to solve incomplete quadratics. How many remember this from 7th grade? Or 7th grade. Algebra 1. Remember this one, one? Some of you halfway. Let's see if we can jog your memory a little. Write this down. x squared is equal to 32 minus x squared. 3x squared equals 32 minus x squared. Step number one is to isolate the x squared. But here we've got more than one x squared. 
Well, we can't have more than one, so we always do what, Kendall? It's so good to have you back in my classroom, Kendall. And so to get rid of the little one, we're going to move the negative x squared over class as a? To get? 4x squared is equal to 32. And then to finish getting the x squared by itself, we just divide away the? To get x squared equals? 8. And then we're going to take the square root of both sides. Of course, the square root of x squared, for all practical purposes, is just? X. Because the square and the square root cancel. But you have to take the square roots of 8, and that's irrational. But it's reducible. What would that reduce to, anyone? 2 square root of 4. Right. Well, careful. 4 times 2, but you take the square root of the 4 to get 2, times the square root of the other 2, and don't forget the positive negative. So we'll leave our answer as positive negative 2 times the square root of 2. Questions on this equation? Feel like you're figuring out what we're doing here? Write this one down. 20 minus 2x squared equals 4x squared. 20 minus 2x squared equals 4x squared. And what should we do here? Genesis? Um, I don't really want a factor here. That's not one of my key steps. My first step is to isolate x squared. But we, again, we've got a problem, Genesis. There's two of them. So what have we got to do? Bring in the negative 2x over. As a to get is equal to the 20. Um, so, but we're still not isolated. But at least there's only one of these x squares, right? Just like before, you can't have multiple x's. You can't have multiple x squares. So we're still needing to isolate the x squared. Divide away the six. Let's divide away the 6 from both sides. And although I can't divide 20 by 6 evenly, I could at least reduce my 26 down to... Uh, negative 2. Take a 2 out of the top and bottom. 10 thirds. 10 thirds. And then, class, I've got to, once we've isolated the x squared, Take the square roots, good Brandon. So we take the square roots of both sides, and of course the square root of the x squared just becomes x. And here I'm going to have to do a positive negative, but um, we can't leave the square root of 10 thirds because class, we're not allowed to have fractions or denominators in our radical, right? Oh, so you mean we're not done reducing radicals? No. No, we're not. It's coming back, all right? And so here we've got to multiply top and bottom class by square root of 3, or 3 under the radical, to get initially the square root of 30 ninths. Then we can leave our answers positive, negative, square root of 30 all over, which is what? 3, the rational number. There we go. Remember, so multiply top and bottom to get something in the denominator that's rational. Take the square root of the denominator. If you can't do anything about the numerator, who cares? We never cared about numerators before. We still don't. And uh, don't forget your positive negative to get your two irrational roots here. Questions on this? This is not something we had to do a whole lot in Algebra 1 where we had to reduce the radical answers, but it's Algebra 2 now. Write this one down. 2x squared minus 4 plus x squared equals 71. 2x squared minus 4 plus x squared equals 71. And... Um, Thoughts here, Audrey? Um, you have to isolate the x squared. Good. If they're on opposite sides, we get rid of the little one. Here, they're right here together. We might as well just combine them into a single x squared to get. And at the same time, we're combining them. Let's ditch the, the as a to get. All right, so we're closer to isolating x squared. And then we've gotten rid of the 4, and we've combined to a single x squared term. But we still need 2 to get x squared equals. Ah, finally something easy. Now we take the square root of both sides class to get? Good, positive and negative 5. Get both roots there by taking both the positive and negative square roots. Questions on solving pure quadratics? Yes, ma'am? My calculator is saying 75 divided by 3 is 26. 75 divided by 3 is 26. You hit 8. You hit 78. That's an 8. It's, you're hitting 5 and it's coming up as 8. It's, it's weird. Okay, 75 divided by 3 equals. There we go. I had to touch it. 
oh, your screen's shot. You must have dropped your calculator down the stairs recently. Uh, and so <laughs> you are seeing that line at the six, but see when I push on the calculator? Oh. That's all. Yeah, so you got to be very careful with your calculator. Treat it like the uh, priceless op $10 object it is, but you may need a new calculator soon. Or just don't use your calculator like I do. And then um, that's another solution. Or squeeze the corner of the calculator all the time. And you get a very strong grip, so the next time your brother does something. Anyway, um, <laughs> all right, so let me go ahead and give you some of these to practice there at your seats. Now, Breck, it's like a wonderful will happen if I drop my calculator. <laughs> Breck, come on, man. All right, 2R squared. Breck and woke up, it's like, what's he talking about? <laughs> Just picking on you, Breck, and go back to this game. That's the fun part about having video students. You can pretend they're doing all kinds of things. All right, it's limited by my imagination, which is very big. <laughs> Diving. Don't miss the water. <laughs> There's word problems for that in physics class. Just wait till physics. We got some great word problems in physics when you get to your senior year. You can isolate the x squared. Take the square roots. Don't forget the positive negative on your answer. Two roots, not one. I just didn't want to embarrass everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> and how would they feel if they knew the kid that was barely even here for any of the instruction just finished in like 3.8 seconds while they took, you know, a minute and a half? Just be embarrassing. We don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, do we, Michael? No. No. Gavin just checked a break at his computer. All right. <laughs> See the destruction you've caused? All right. <laughs> oh, there's three. <laughs> that was actually a really good setup. I'm not gonna lie. It's fine. Every great comedian sets up his own jokes, you know. And he set that up really well. I'll give that to him. I didn't see that. So I finished first. So Abby was first. <laughs> Gavin wished he hadn't thrown the brick now. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote Michael on the brick, now smashed it with a hammer, <laughs> like a voodoo doll. <laughs> uh, Mr. White's random bricks laying around. <laughs> now I'm finished. Okay, we were wondering when you would finish, Michael. We're all sitting around waiting on you. All right, not Kendall. All right, Kendall, on the first one, what do we need to do? <laughs> to do doing what? Three steps. Yeah. Oh, two steps. Add the four. Add the four to get. That's an R, it just doesn't look good. And then divide by two to get. Um, and then, now that we've isolated the R squared in this case, we. Add to and what we do, we get. Two. Minus a point. Positive negative, positive negative two. How many, are, how many got positive and negative two for your answers? Looking to the next one, uh, Michael, now that you're finished, what do you want to. Uh, you need to subtract the 12 to get 48. And then you got to divide the three on both sides, and that gives you 16. Then you got to take the square root, and that gives you positive and negative 4. Good job. Getting both answers there. How many also had positive and negative 4 for the answers? Good. Looking at the next one, what do we need to do here? Abby, first one finished. Good job. Oh, Proud of you. Favorite student? Move the 5x squared over as a 5x to get 2x squared equals 90. All right. And x squared equals... You know, like, I wish they all came out this easily for me. How many got positive negative 7 for the last one? Good. Now let's take a look at some real problems here. <laughs> let's take a look at a little bit more challenging problems. These are very basic, like what we would have looked at in Algebra 1. 
take a look at some that might be a little bit more uh, Algebra 2 level, because I don't want to insult anyone's intelligence here. <laughs> Except Brecken's. Just kidding. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, yeah, and Brandon's. I forgot about him. It's not easy to force myself. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I'm picking up as usual. All right, at your seats. Remember when we square a binomial, three steps. Square the first square, the last, multiply and double. Don't forget to multiply and double. Okay, that's three. There are three equations on the Johnny board. They're all quadratics. Yes, sir. Did you forget to square the two, the end one for the second problem? No. Oh, okay. So that just makes it more complicated. Seven minus two x. Mm -hmm. Like, no, it gives us an x in the equation too. Well, there was going to be an x anyway. Yeah. Because when you multiply double. What's with the kids chewing on the strings of the hoodie? I don't get it. <laughs> Brandon thinks it makes it more. It's like my, my five year old, he, he, he chews on stuff all the time and puts stuff in his mouth, but I, I thought, you know. Okay. Well, that explains it because there's a few other people, and I guess they all have that same. <laughs> I've got one kid who chews on pen caps. When I call it an answer, when I call it an answer, he sucks the pen cap in his mouth, slides it off to the side and behind his teeth and, and answers. I'm like, when is he going to swallow that pen cap? <laughs> Fortunately, it's got like an air vent through it. So if you swallow it, you can still breathe. Mm -hmm. you know, but, but if it ever got clogged before he swallowed it, and there's no telling what sort of death could happen. Not that I think of those things. <laughs> Get the tip of the hoodie string in vinegar or something. Yeah, you won't want to put it in your mouth then, will you? Yeah. Arsenic, whatever. Cyanide. Cyanide is too easy to trace. Give him an air shot before you do it. It'll take a heart attack. Probably shouldn't say that one. For the record, we don't actually want to kill anybody. We're not endorsing the killing of anyone. The Bible makes it very clear that it's wrong. We don't even hate because hate's wrong. We just pick. Because the Bible never says, Thou shalt not pick on people. It says, Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Okay, I think I Just be careful. <laughs> As my dad used to say, army humor, son, army humor. The general can say anything he wants about the captain, but the captain better be real careful what he says about the general. Okay. So only so much picking you can do with authority. Or authority can say anything you want. <laughs> okay, with him, please. With him. All right, so Brandon, since we've been picking on you, uh, this first problem, what do we got to do? Multiply by four. Yeah, and then that'll give us... N squared equals 32. And then we got to... Good. Factor into a 16 and 2. 4 times square root of 2. And of course, don't forget the positive negative. Great job, Brandon. How many got the same answer as Brandon? All right. Look at the next one. What do we got to do here, Matty? Uh-huh. And uh, then over here, what do we got to do? Did you say negative 35? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm deaf. 35? Be 
Okay, who? Oh, careful. What's 25 negative 10? <laughs> 15. And uh, so we have an x squared positive 15 all equal to 35. By the way, uh, I was tutoring uh, Kyla the other day, and we mentioned your, your tans. And I noticed she does the exact same thing, so I don't know who's influencing who here. Anyway, uh, pretty continue. Now that we're done with the tans, they're all gone now. Way to do it all in your head there since your work kind of fell apart there. Yeah. Um, good job. At the end there, how many got the answer that Maddie ended up with? All right. Questions on that? What's the answer? Positive negative 2 times the square root of 5. You also couldn't hear because it was kind of quiet. You did? Okay, good, good. All right. Questions on this? Questions on that one? Again, be careful when you square the first square, the last, and multiply and double. Again, initially it's like, wait a second, that's an x to the first. That's that's a complete quadratic. But because of the negative 10x over here, it ends up as a pure quadratic where we can isolate the x squared, take the square root. And this one's a great big rational equation where we have to get rid of the fractions by multiplying everything by the LCD. And what is the LCD in this problem here, Michael? 60T. 60T. Sounds like you stutter or something, 60T. Um, and uh, when we do, we of course cancel the 12 and the 60 to get uh, T times T. 5T squared. And then here the 5T and the 60T cancel to give us a 12, 12 which gives us uh, 12 say like that. 12t squared minus 180 minus 180 and over here the 5 and the 60 cancel to give us 12 12 t times t gives us 12t squared and uh, very conveniently michael we can uh cancel the 12s well the 12t squares okay let's, let's not short change the t squared part of it uh and now move the 180 over as a positive to get 5t squared equals positive 180 then Got to divide the 5 over. To get t squared equals? 36. And then t just equals? Positive and negative 6. Way to remember the positive and negative there as well. How many had positive and negative 6 on the last one? Questions on that last one. Questions on pure or incomplete quadratics. Homework for this evening is to do page 82. Numbers 17 and 18 at the bottom of the page. Page 82. Numbers 17 and 18 at the bottom of the page. On page 95, do 2 through 10 the even, or 12 through 20 the even, excuse me, I can't read. 12 through 20 the even on page 95. And on page 116, do numbers 11 and 12. Page 116, do numbers 11 and 12. One more time, page 82, 17 and 18 at the bottom. Page 95, 12 through 20, the even. And page 116, numbers 11 and 12. I do want you very quickly, now that you got the homework written down, show you where we're going with this tomorrow. If I said that x squared equals 9, class, we would say that x equals positive negative 3. What if I said that w squared equals 9? Well, that would mean that w would equal positive negative 3, correct? Well, what if w plus 1 squared equal 9? Then w plus 1 would equal positive negative 3, because when you take the square root, the square and the square would cancel, right? But we wouldn't be done at this point, would we? What would we have to do with the positive 1? Subtract. Subtract it as a negative 1 from both the 3 and the negative 3. So that 3 minus 1 two. is 2. And negative 3 minus 1, yeah. negative 4. Does that make sense? To where you could have a binomial like x positive 5 squared equal to, say, 8. Well, again, if it were an x squared, I'd take the square root. and still take the square root of both sides. What do I end up with here, anyone? Yeah, now here, though, when I go to subtract the 5 away, can I subtract a rational 5 from irrational 2 squared root 2? Or negative square root 2? Or 2 squared root 2? Suddenly, my answer like that as a binomial. That's what we're going to be looking at tomorrow. We'll kind of go from there. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your day. When the bell rings, you'll be dismissed.